So as you may know, the human genome has some three billion base pairs or bits of genetic information, and that encodes roughly 22,000 genes. These are uh, stretches of DNA sequence that encode ultimately a product uh, that is a protein, uh, which actually makes the cells function. So as I already explained to you, there's this flow of biological information where you have to extract the information buried in DNA, convert it into RNA, and what I'm not going to tell you about today is the process of going from RNA to protein, which is a uh, a reaction called a translational reaction, I'm going to instead just focus on the first step of converting DNA into RNA, which is the process of transcription. Now one of the most uh, amazing results that we got over the last decade or so was when the human genome was entirely sequenced, the first few that were sequenced, uh, we realized that actually the number of genes in humans is not vastly different from many other organisms, uh, even simple organisms like uh, little worms or fruit flies and so forth. That is, roughly 22 to 25,000 genes is all the number of genes that all of these different organisms have. And yet, uh, anybody looking at us versus a, uh, a little round worm in the soil or a fruit fly can tell that we're a much more complex organism with a much bigger brain, much more complex uh, behavior and so forth. So how does this happen? S uh, part of the answer to, to this very interesting m mystery or paradox lies in the way that genes are organized and how they're regulated. And one of the most striking results of the genome sequencing project was to realize that a vast, vast majority of the DNA in our chromosomes is actually not coding for specific gene products, and that only roughly 3% of the DNA is actually encoding, let's call those little arrows that I show you on this uh, purple DNA, are the gene coding regions. So you'll notice that there's a lot of non-arrow sequences, which I'll show you in this next slide as green. These are non-coding regions. So the vast majority, 97% or greater, is non-coding. So what are these other sequences doing? And of course it turns out that these sequences carry very important little fragments of DNA uh, which we call regulatory sequences. And these are the sequences that actually control whether a gene gets turned on or not. 